Hey everyone, Ekman here with a, another video. And today we have a top 32 breakdown for the Play TCG Arlington Regionals that happened this past weekend. It was over a thousand players and 10 rounds of Swiss into this top 32 cut that was played out as well that you guys see here right now. And a couple of things before we get started. First, if you guys like these videos, please make sure to hit that like and subscribe. It means a lot. You can also check out all of the deck lists for all the events I've covered on my website, Eggman Adventures, the link below. And then also thank you to Play TCG for providing top 16 list as of right now and trying to find the other 16 for top 32 uh, there's a good chance it's already updated on the website but just as recording i don't have all those lists but do shout out uh, the people on twitter who did get some list uh, out there as well so i did link that on the website so you have a couple in the top 32 we just don't have the full th top 32 uh, and then also thanks to play tcg for doing a live stream for this event as well it's on their twitch right now which i don't think it's permanently linked at at the moment right now so these links may expire down in the future if they they do re-upload on their YouTube. You guys can check that out as well. Uh, but I do appreciate that. And shouts to both Risu and UniX for doing the commentary for it as well. So anyways, we're, we're going to jump into this top 32. And it's honestly more of what we've been seeing for the last couple weeks of 11 Sakazukis, 10 Katakuris, 5 Morias, 4 Reiju, 1 Nami, and 1 Yamato as well. So, uh, you know, taking over 75% of the top cut is not too surprising for these three of Sokka, Kata, and Moria. They've been doing very, very well. Uh, this is Kind of reflects a little bit of what my most recent tier list is which these three are definitely on the top of the tier uh list and by themselves rage is kind of like a little like step and a half below and then we do have some miscellaneous so there was another event that happened this weekend in peoria which we already did a video on as well uh but rage did not top that event which is really interesting but then it did get four spots in this one which is cool too so uh there also was the fact that we did get top cut for this event which is generally pretty rare in north american events most of our events are one day events so be to be able to have a two day event with top cut was uh, really interesting especially this is the first one in this format and the largest event i think that north america is going to get in this format except for i think they have a, like another one next week but by and large we don't have all these two day events which is really cool to get one after a, hi a big hiatus in that so i think we're going to get more in the future as well just just the sense of like venues and stuff is just kind of weird here in north american compared to uh, other regions as well but that's kind of how it is uh, i will be again trying to update this as much as i can as i get more deck lists for these if you guys are also interested in seeing where people topped on uh, swiss you can check out uh, the post that they made on twitter i put it right here uh, so we can see that jackie mock our rage player which we're going to go over in a minute was also undefeated uh, going into swiss and then made it to top eight when in top uh, cut as well which is really impressive so anyways we're going to go over the top placing list for each one of these leaders starting off with our uh, champion jesse with Gecko Moria. And I think Echo's been doing some uh, pretty big changes uh, throughout if we're playing the Rebecca Hina combo or not. We'll see that in at least in the top 16 we looked through all of them. Uh, the Rebecca Hina combo was not present. We did I did see a couple uh, of the ones that topped. There was one, I believe, actually that did have Rebecca, just no copies of Hina in it. Uh, so that's kind of uh, something for it. And, and the reason I feel like the it's tempting to run the the combos because you know you get the the value from it but unlike uh sakazuki you really don't get to uh use like a hound blaze or something like a two cost removal off an eight drop uh moria and then you know having those two extra dawn ready so because of that like you just it's more of a value play than more uh like a, a super value play which you can be in sakazuki with being able to build your own board and get like removal on your opponent's stuff so uh, and anyways, other than that, I think the deck has been generally very strong. It's been understood in a lot of ways of how it works. Uh, I would say it's more pilot centered and, uh, you know, being able to adapt on which cards you're able to see and also what cards are your priorities and which matchups, which I think is really important. And uh, it's been doing this very, very good. So uh, a couple of tech choices in this one specifically is like how many brand new and how Mepos you're running. We're playing one copy of Toshigi, which kind of like is it like the middle road between a Hina and uh, a 2K, where this is a 2K that you can give something minus two cost, uh, which means that you can do Toshigi, use this effect, play the Absalom off your trash, and you can do that effect. So pretty nice there. So it's kind of between like a, a Helmepo and a Suru. Uh, in, you know, the fact that it's a 2K, but you can't play it off Gekko Moria uh, as easily as it has to be take the four cost slot for it. So, uh, but that's like the one of add there. So I don't have much more to say about Moria. It's been very good in this format. It's going to continue to do very well. And congratulations to Jesse for winning this event. Next up, we have our second place. So this is Arnold's version of Katakuri. 
And uh, Katakuri has been still just very, I'd say, despite it being very RNG related, uh, very consistent. And just the fact that uh, you have so many good things that can happen, uh, you're able to take advantage of a lot of them. I think the biggest decision for a lot of players based on the list we were able to look at for the top 16 was the inclusion of Onami or not. Uh, this was kind of either people were running like three or four copies or they weren't running it at all. I personally like this card because it is like a really good backup play if you are going first. Uh, if you don't find your Paro Sparrow on turn two, being able to play Onami and then have a 7k banish attack with Katakuri is usually very strong. Uh, and it's not too difficult for Katakuri to find some additional Dawn to boost this up later too. So I think that's something good, especially if you need to have like a, just the two dropout to start hitting at your opponent's cards if that's needed. Uh, that does help the matchup. And then obviously we've seen stuff like Kiko Nojo, Sanji, our Lin Lins. Like this deck has been very, uh, very, very known of how obnoxious and how good it is at not only developing a board, but just having just very, very scary cards that can exist in our life too. So I don't really have much more to say. I think Katakuri is in a really good spot for this format. And uh, luck or not, I think there's a lot of skill that goes involved and on top of it. Uh, and, and it's the reason Katakuri I don't think was topping as well previously was more of it, you know, needing the luck in life to be able to get a chance and right now i think there's a lot of chances for it. you can just be up ahead so many different ways that the the luck is not needed as much you can still just win like 10 percent of the time because you have the good cards in your life but there's still a lot of potential to win even if you don't have those cards so this is the list from arnold and congratulations for their second place finish there and the next up we have our sakazuki's so we have billy and quinton's version of it as well and probably the biggest thing for, for this deck right now is if we include the uh, the Navy HQ, the stage for this build or not, being able to get the additional minus two cost or minus one cost with it passively on the activate main. But using your leader effect with it means you get the minus two cost, which is really great for removing four cost with our two cost uh uh, removal of either Houndblaze, Ama, or the Rob Lucci as well. So being able to get just more value from this Rob Lucci also means that like for eight Dawn uh, for on Gecko Moria turn, we can get the additional reduction without having to like need a Helmeppo at times or use a brand new at times. So uh, it's been it's been really good for those kind of removal. Obviously, it's a card that, you know, can have the issue of uh, being stuck in your hand at times, but obviously Sakazuki can kind of fix that. But I also do think that the more standard version is in a good spot as well. And you also see that, you know, even from the top 16, we've seen uh, a couple of them that uh, had like, you know, two copies of the stage or had different ratios of them. So I think there's been like some middling uh, in between uh, builds too, which you guys can again check out here. I kind of, if they were running the stage, I, I noted it with Navy HQ on, on the ones that I had for for this one but uh generally than that um i think the deck is just obviously still very solid uh we have it for the rest of this meta until op07 when it does get banned with sakazuki and great eruption getting hit which also obviously hits moria as well but uh i think there's a really good reason why this deck is getting banned but i also do think that of a deck of its caliber you do have to play it correctly and there's a lot of ways and a lot of decisions that if you make the mistake on you get behind very very quickly too so of a deck that is going to get banned i do appreciate the amount of skill that goes into piloting this deck correctly and uh, i think it's you know it's still a really really big accomplishment for getting a uh, top four with these so congratulations to both billy and quinton for their finishes there and then we're going into our you know more miscellaneous category or at least not top three but we have uh next up jackie with their version of raju and again jackie was undefeated in swiss and then went undefeated in the first two rounds of top cut as well so being able to go essentially 12 and 0 uh, or sorry 12 and 1 uh, for the weekend is just a really fantastic record in general uh, so this is the the build of raju and uh you really can't have that much diversity in a build like this i think the biggest decision if you're playing yonji or not more times than not i've been seeing that queen has just been the better card for the deck uh yes it's a little expensive but it does have you know your on play dawn minus one which is really nice which means that essentially it's a you know a draw three discard one which is fantastic uh the deck does need blockers at times too or you have to get out of you know, like some really early attacks with this deck so there can be like some weird times if you don't get your engine started or if you don't see your vin smoke rages to get the additional card draw you can be in a bad spot but uh, obviously ichi is a very great card being able to be a 7k uh with rush and it's also it's cost seven so some decks just have a really difficult time getting rid of this so if you play this as soon as possible it can be a 7k attack for the rest of the game which is very strong 
Smoke. So you do miss out on the Vin Smoke Judge uh, super play by not running the Yonji. But again, you don't have that much room in your deck in the first place that it's very tricky to uh, to give up spots for more of the rounding tech options, including like the Charlotte Pudding, which uh, if your your opponent essentially has to play around this the entire day anyways. So uh, that is strong for the deck. So you don't even you know technically have to run it if your opponent's already aware that it's around and they don't have to. But uh, again, it's a 1K, so you're really not missing out on anything. So I don't have much more to say. I think Reiju is a, is a really fun deck. It's very strong. There are some unfortunate issues where if you don't find your pieces at the right time, uh, you just kind of stutter uh, and not get going but uh, when you do get going it seems like the best deck in the room too so i don't have much more to say congratulations to jackie for their run there and for their top eight finish and then lastly we got two more top 32 lists we got william here with their version of yamato and uh we've had like this discussion if we want more of like the fortress build or the more aggressive build and i think at this point the aggressive build has kind of won out um there's more kind of text to kind of halfway through it but this one is uh, i would say very aggressive in the fact that we have a lot of cards to rest our opponent cards this means two copies of sugar three copies of Izo over here and then also three copies of paradise uh, tosuska so being able to uh, get rid of your opponent's blockers especially four or less which means like Borsalinos and Rebecca's uh, is just very strong so then you can use that additional like one uh, if you can get cards on the board you can use the paradise or the Izo or the sugar and then use that additional gone with their leader effect for Yamato to put it underneath a Kikunojo or something like that which I think is very strong so that helps us out in a lot of ways uh, we do have like the Momo uh, which can't find itself unfortunately but it can find again always your cards that rest uh include and then also the hiori which has been very strong and uh the kiko nojo we have a two, two copies of mihawk which are great to play out a, a kiko nojo a nekomamushi charlotte cracker one of these three uh off it as well and then our top end of like the hody jones and a nell so i haven't really seen this like f exact 50 before and i'll still kind of contend that yamato is uh one of the more creative decks that exists in this meta there's just so many open ways to play it that it's really unique and there are a lot of different builds from it which i think is really fun even if they all kind of have the same kind of flavor there's a lot of room for card choices and uh, I think that's really cool for a deck like this so uh, again we've been seeing a lot more of the more aggressive build for it uh, I haven't seen fortress top nearly as much but maybe we'll see it in the next couple weeks and uh, I think this is a really good build as well so this is Williams build congratulations for their top 32 there and to wrap it up we do have a, another Nami that topped this weekend this is Guermo's version of it here and uh, we don't have a lot of new cards I kind of mentioned it yesterday but I'll mention it again today uh, the newest card from OP of six is white snake being able to get a plus 1k on our leader is very strong and it draws a card too so replacing it is not too shabby uh being able to uh rearrange your life off the trigger is fine i don't think you'd ever really use that unless you needed to but it could come up every once in a while but uh it's a very very flexible deck also shout out to the usage of boodle love boodle as a as a one or two of uh sometimes you just get need a blocker right uh so akazuki you probably never played against them because they will just bottom deck your boodle but uh other decks you either stop an attack or you get a mill and it's for two and it's a 1k i uh, i like the little flavor add there too so i don't have much more to say there have been at least enough new cards that there have been some minor ratio changes for nami it's not like the standard only 50 card build that we saw at the end of opo3 and pretty much most of opo4 so i do appreciate that change but it is more or less the same vibe it's been for the last little bit so uh but it is a a strong deck uh when when able to uh go off correctly and uh just big congratulations to guermo for their top 32 finish so again that's going to be it for us if you guys want to check out any of the deck lists you can check them out here on my website i only have top 16 plus three on the website right now if you guys want to keep checking back in uh, i'll be trying to update it as much as i can as we get more of this top 32 uh, i just don't have it as a recording but there's a good chance as a recording hour i have it so uh, at the end of recording so uh anyways that's going to be it thank you again to play tcg for for everything for this one uh thank you to you guys for watching these videos and hitting like and subscribe i really truly do appreciate all the support and that's going to be it for me so thank you guys so much for watching and i'll catch you all next time